Dear all, I want to explain you an example because maybe I have no time to uh, comment it uh, uh, during, during the course. We don't have uh, much time left. And I think it's a nice example, it's a new one, by, by the way, I've uh, created it uh, this year. And um, I think it's nice uh, because it shows a different way of, uh, of approach with respect to the example uh, of uh, numerical squadrons uh, that I've uh, explained uh, at lecture. Um, it, uh, it's, it's an example on, uh, on uh, regression, in fact. On, uh, and uh, I've written a readme file, uh, which is, in fact, uh, a tech file, and uh, where I explain in detail, in detail, the, the content. Let's see if we can make it a little bit bigger. Uh, let's see. No. No, even worse. Okay. Now I think uh, it's good. Okay. I've created, uh, uh, I want to do uh, a code for, in fact, what is, in fact, linear regression. And uh, I want, uh, anyway, to do it by identifying some basic components so that I can uh, combine them to have the final result, but at the same time be able to expand them by creating new components uh, to implement different methods or different models. And here, I followed generic programming type of paradigm. So we will not see here any polymorphism at all. Um, so this gives, uh, on the one side, more rigidity to the final program. I will not be able to load uh, dynamically one, uh, one class uh, instead of another, uh, but uh, on the other hand, uh, probably gives uh, uh, more freedom in, uh, uh, in, in choosing uh, uh, or in modifying uh, the various components. Because I remember that uh, polymorphism imposes uh, quite a rigid uh, structure. The public interface has to be defined the abstract class, so you have to do virtual uh, uh, virtual method and things like that. I didn't want to to go into that uh, into that business. So first of all, uh, I will uh, introduce some nomenclature also because it is not a, a real standard nomenclature. Uh, the statisticians of you will forgive me because uh, it is uh, I, I'm abusing a little bit. Uh, uh, the standard notation, but I hope uh, it can be understood. Um, first of all, uh, here um, we will have uh, some data. Huh? So the, uh, the datum is normally indicated by y, and I assume that it, de it depends uh, on uh, a variable x. Um, so it's uh, it's a space dependent data, even if it if it is in just one dimension, even if extending to more dimension, it's not trivial but not difficult, to, and we can maintain the same structure of this code. So the datum is in fact a function. It's a function of a variable x, which represents a stochastic variable with an underlying statistical distribution. For instance, I can have that y is uh, uh, at each point x uh, is uh, uh, governed by a normal, a normal distribution. With uppercase vector, um, we indicate some sample data, so some values for x and the corresponding value for y. With model, we indicate uh, instead a quantity 
They depend on X and on a set of parameters that I indicated theta that given the parameters returns a feature of the data Y. So it's a definition different from that normally used in statistics for model, even if it is related. Typically, uh, this M may want to represent the expected value of Y at a point X. This is a typical situation. Then the other ingredient I need to do, to have, is to have a cost function. That is a measure of the discrepancy between the measure feature, the one that I get from the data, and the one provided by the model. Typically, it is based on a, some pri a priori assumption of the probabilistic distribution of the data. For instance, uh, um, we may take uh, the log uh, la likelihood estimation with a minus sign because we will want to find the minimum of the cost function is a cost function, not a gain function. And uh, so where I have uh, um, where here I have a, a probabilistic, uh, an a priori pro probabilistic distribution of the data. And this is the expected value, the expected value of the logarithm of this quantity. Um, it means then uh, that uh, my cost function will be formed like that. I can drop one over n because it's completely irrelevant since I want to find the minimum. Um, if we consider that uh, as, a, as, a more, as a probabilistic model, a normal distribution with a constant variance, that is a variance that does not depend on x, and so my log likelihood estimation will become that. Uh, it is well known uh, from basic course uh, of statistics uh, that uh, this uh, is indeed minimizing this j is equivalent to minimize this other j. That is just uh, the mean square error. Okay? Again, you should have 1 over n. Sometimes you take the square root. But since it is irrelevant for the minimum, we will look uh, at a uh, as something of this form. It's the difference between the measure value y and it's uh, the estimate, if you want, uh, of uh, the expected value given a set of parameters. And then we have another, the last ingredient that I need to have is a solver. The solver, or better, the optimizer, is a tool that computes the minimum of this j. In general, you can have many methods for the solver, but you can have many models, okay? And many cost functions. We have seen that you may have different one depending on the statistical distribution you choose. So, we have a clear functional hierarchy. The solver needs a cost function which in turn needs a model, and finally we need to define the type of data the model operates on. So it's a, it's a classic uh, structure where composition is, uh, is nice, okay? Uh, so uh, the solver will have a cost function, the cost function will contain the model, the model, of, and everything of course has to know about the data. What we did, of course, I, I didn't implement uh, many, many different uh, models and many different solvers, etc., etc. I just uh, do, did, did uh, just one possible uh, example. But uh, this, uh, the, the, the system is such that, uh, the library is such that you can really extend it uh, as, uh, as you wish. Um, so I chosen to represent M as a linear combination of uh, parameters beta. Now the parameter is beta before it was theta. Sorry about some confusion of notation. But beta is a set of parameter. And the variation with x is obtained by a linear combination with some shape functions or basis function, as you want to call it. In the case of polynomial regression, that is the only one I'm considering here, we have chosen that this phi 
has nothing else than uh, the, um, the monomial xi. Okay? But other, other choice uh, can be possible. These, uh, however, this um, composition is, uh, um, will give rise to a linear problem because uh, the model is linear with respect to the parameters, and that's what, mot uh, what matters. The model is linear with respect to the parameter, can behave even wildly with respect to the x, but is linear with respect to beta. Um, it is well known that the least, uh, the, the, the mean least square error, so if I want to treat uh, these cost function, I can solve uh, if the number of parameters is not too large, uh, up to 100, let's say, I can solve it uh, using QR factorization. So I build this matrix, and then uh, here is just a little recall of QR factorization. I hope that you, you know it probably better than I do. This is quite efficient and is already available in the Eigen library. Very good. But maybe one can think to, uh, to one may want to minimize uh, the resulting functional, so the functional obtained with uh, this uh, mean square error or another, it's not, it's not uh, so, so important, uh, with, uh, um, with a, a more classical, uh, opti with a classical optimi or less classical optimization technique. And for that purpose, I had a look at the C++ numerical solver library. It is already available on Git sub, as a Git submodule. Uh, so uh, you, you, you already have it uh, uh, in the PAX uh, exercise uh, Git repository. The only thing, if you have not uh, uh, cloned it uh, using the, uh, the submodule option, you have to do git submodule update uh, minus minus init minus minus recursive. This will uh, update all the submodule and in particular the CPP numerical solvers submodule, which is a, a nice library, is integrated with Eigen and gives you a lot of optimization algorithm. So it's not so bad. Documentation is not exceptional, actually not very good, but, uh, but there are quite a few examples in the readme file that help you a lot. Uh, remember that uh, if you want to have a, a full optimization, you have uh, either you do this or, or uh, you do that to compile the example. So let's see the code a little bit. We can see it here because I've really copied uh, in this uh, manual, uh, the code. Uh, um, well, I've stripped uh, a, few, uh, a few comments. Uh, so uh, in the code, uh, in, um, the, in the actual code, uh, you find many more comments, OK? But let's first start with trades. Because uh, I imagined, even if I will only use Eigen, uh, I didn't have time to do to, to something else. But I imagine that in the future, uh, we want to represent uh, vectors uh, and matrices, uh, not necessarily with Eigen, maybe using these other nice libraries called Armadillo, and uh, is, uh, is, another, is an alternative to Eigen, uh, and some uh, prefer it. Um, and I would like uh, to be able to be able to change from Eigen to Armadillo in the future with uh, less, uh, without having to, re possibly having to replicate the minimum amount of code. So the first thing I do, I did, uh, well, let's take care of uh, types so that at least uh, I can uh, change the type from Eigen to Armadillo uh, in, a, in, an, uh, in a simple way. And uh, to do that, you can use traits. So you see, I have uh, defined uh, a little structure called regression traits, and, and uh, that takes uh, a template value, and the template value is uh, an enumerator. 
that can take at the moment two values, Hagen or Armadillo. And I have specialized the one for Hagen. If I'm using Hagen, the function will be, my function will be wrapped in a standard function. The basis function is just a, a vector of function. So each of these functions will represent a base function, one of the phi that you see here, hmm, that are, will be stored in a vector. So far, we have not used much Hagen. But then uh, inside the code, uh, vector will be an F, a vector xd, so that I can use all of the efficiency and, uh, and uh, expressiveness of the Eigen library, while matrix uh, is, in fact, an Eigen matrix. Uh, in this case, it's a full matrix of double uh, with dynamic, uh, um, dynamic uh, um, dimensions. Then uh, the parameters uh, will be stored in a vector, that is an Eigen vector, and the cost function will be, again, wrapped in a function that takes a double and returns a double. So this is a, tra is a, tra is a typical trait. This is a pure trait. There are only types defined. If I uh, will use uh, Armadillo in the future, the first thing I will do, I will uh, create a new specialization with Armadillo instead of Eigen, and I will change, uh, probably not these two, but certainly this, guys. Huh? So, I wanted, uh, as I said, first of all, uh, to implement uh, a polynomial. So the phi will be polynomials. So the first thing I did, uh, I created uh, a, a class uh, to store the monomial basis function. You know that uh, a polynomial can be described by various type of basis function. Here I've chosen the monomial, but again, one may decide to use a Lagrange polynomials or uh, uh, other type of, of basis for a polynomial. Hmm? Here I've just chosen the old style uh, monomial basis function, the one uh, you, uh, that gives uh, the actual definition of a polynomial. And you see, in the class, uh, I just use as, as trait, regression trait L, and L is a parameter, which by default is the li linear algebra library that I choose. The default is Eigen, since at, at the moment I'm using only Eigen, okay? But in principle, I can change the template and uh, the types for uh, the various, uh, for instance, vector, uh, the type for vector will change because if I use armadillo, here I will have a, an armadillo vector and not an Eigen vector. So the most important, the most important uh, uh, methods of this class the other are just getter and setter for setting the function and something like that. But uh, the real uh, important one are um, these two. Actually, also these three. Okay. The, this one evaluates the basis function on uh, a certain location x. And this computes the derivatives at a certain point x. This uh, is uh, um, because uh, if uh, I will, uh, uh, well, um, here it's not really important because in the cost function, if I need a, a derivative, it's a derivative with respect to the parameter, not a derivative with respect to x. But uh, since it's not so, so expensive, I, I've also de defined the derivative. The most important uh, is this one. So all uh, possi uh, possible other basis function, I can write whatever I want, but uh, they must have uh, a method called eval that takes a double and return a vector, whatever the vector is, okay? 
Then uh, this size uh, just returns the number of basis functions that is, in fact, the capacity of the model. The number of, uh, it will correspond to the number of parameters, because for each basis function, I have a parameter. Uh, I'm storing the basis functions, uh, and also I'm storing uh, the, uh, the, the derivatives. So for each basis function, I also have uh, the derivative. I am skipping here. Uh, oh no, I'm giving also some uh, implementation details. Uh, um, I will skip uh, most implementation details. Uh, you will uh, have a look uh, at, uh, at, uh, at the code for them. Um, here is just uh, the, a function, our, our computer monomial. I'm using the, the the trick uh, of, uh, of uh, I'm using a, um, a recursive function here. Anyway, I will not have a polynomial of very, very high order. You know that you get very unstable if you use polynomial of too high, high order. So I thought that uh, doing a, a, a nice, uh, simple uh, um, recursive function was the simplest thing. So this is a function that composes comp Com compute the monomial, it's called pow, because in fact it's the power, compute the, the, the monomial uh, at x. And here is the derivative. So the de this is just the derivative of a monomial. Now I need uh, to evaluate uh, the model. So let's suppose uh, uh, I have a set of parameters. I want to evaluate m x theta. Okay, so parameters is theta. I want to evaluate the model at a point x for a given value of the parameter. So the, uh, I, I can have a different uh, way of, uh, of um, I can have different models, okay? Uh, so here is the polynomial regression. But the only important thing, again, is... Uh, to have this method that evaluates m at a point x for a certain value of the parameter. And, uh, and now this is really imp also important. I need to have also the derivative with respect to parameters. This is necessary only if uh, I'm planning to use uh, a gradient type scheme for finding the minimum because then I need the gradients. But if if not, I will not use that. But these for sure I'm gonna use. This evaluates m at a point x for a for a given value of the parameters. Again, there are other other getter and setters just to, uh, but these are not really the the the, the the key method of uh, this class. The key methods of the class are eval and possible eval their part. Uh, you see, since it is a linear model, evaluating the derivative with respect to the parameter is equivalent to evaluating the value of the basis function because I derive with respect to, to a parameter, but the, the derivative of a parameter is just the identity is one, because it's, the model is linear with respect to the parameter. So, so computing the derivative is, in this case, really trivial. The cost function. At the moment, I have implemented only mean square error. Uh, because I didn't, <laughs> but in the future I plan to, to implement also other, other, other cost functions. The mean square error, again, you see, depends on the model evaluator. So that is now passed as a template parameter, because it has to call the method eval of a evaluator. Okay? And indeed, it stores privately the evaluator. So I'm using composition here. And uh, the composed uh, object is 
the type of the composed object, to be more precise, is passed as a template parameter. So uh, MSE equals function. Again, uh, well, there are constructors that take the model. I have also implemented the move, uh, the move version. I could have used uh, uh, the, the technique of um, universal references. Uh, I didn't do it here. So, uh, because maybe the, the, the object containing the model may be rather big, so I'm also here, I, I can also move it uh, if uh, the move semantic uh, is in place, uh, and it is in our case, because in this class uh, I have uh, the nice uh, uh, synthetic uh, uh, move constructor uh, that, are, that are in place. So, Uh, move constructor and move ascending operator are given for free because uh, uh, the, the, the synthetic ones are fine for me. Um, again, uh, the most important methods are in fact these two. You see? There's evaluate the value of the cost function at uh, a point uh, uh, for a set of data x and y. So now I have to pass the data x and y for a given uh, value of the parameters. And also I compute the gradient. Again, I, I don't give the implementation detail. You find it uh, in, the, in the code. Uh, it's, it's just a matter of uh, computing a few things. Now the solvers. The solvers, uh, I have implemented two solvers. One is uh, in regression solver.hpp, and I don't, I, I, I didn't waste uh, time to explain it here because uh, it is uh, a solver that uses QR factorization. And in fact, uh, what it does, uh, uh, it's, it's really a very, si rather simple. It will use uh, QR factorization of, of the Eigen, so it will build, uh, the, it will build uh, uh, the matrix uh, and do the QR factorization and solve the problem for the parameters. What is probably more interesting uh, uh, is interfacing with the CPP NumSolver library, because uh, uh, I wanted also to use uh, other type of optimization method, not just the Q QR. QR is not really an optimization method, it is a direct method. I exploit the fact that uh, this problem is linear in the parameters, so I can solve it with Q, and I'm using the least square, uh, the, the mean square uh, error estimation, um, so I can use QR. But in general, I will have to use an optimization program. And so uh, I need uh, to interface uh, with CPP num solver. So this is the first example. You find many other in the readme file of CPP numerical solvers. Uh, this is an example of interfacing with uh, this library. This library um, is rather simple, in fact. Uh, it's, uh, very, it's reasonably well designed. If you want to define a cost function for CPP optlib, you need to have something that derives from CPP optlib. So, uh, yeah, uh, by the end, you have to override some method of CPP optlib problem. Okay, so CPP optlib problem is the base class of all cost function for the CPP num solver library. Double is just because we are working with doubles. So it's parameterized with respect to the type used inside the cost function. Okay. I don't know why it task. Okay, these are the the comments. I've left the comments here, so you can read them. But now instead of uh, of reading them, I'll go directly to the code I will, so. First of all, the function, 
um, is this one. I don't see the, sorry, <laughs> where is it? Okay, so something went wrong here. So these, uh, uh, fortunately, probably when I did cut and paste, uh, something went wrong. So everything here is green. I will promise you that the version you find uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the example directory will uh, not have any more of that. So this, is, in fact, is a piece of, of, of the code. Uh, is a template class uh, that takes, uh, the class template that takes as a template parameter the cost function. Okay, and wraps it so that it looks like a cost function for CPP numerical solver. Okay, so this is my cost function. I uh, is a cost function that uh, has been designed following my ideas, uh, following my, uh, using uh, my. Uh, uh, my definition of methods and everything is uh, the one that we have just seen or any other I can think of. Uh, but now I have to wrap it so that it looks like a, a CPP solver cost function. So what I have to do, I have to inherit from CPP to lib problem, inherit. Then I will just get uh, some uh, uh, some types and uh, by inheriting from the inheriting by yes using the trait in cost function you see with this use of trait i'm making sure that all of the ingredients uh, all the blocks uh, are consistent in the use of uh, the types if i change the type uh, in the trait uh, hmm, for instance, because I decide to use armadillo, or because I decide to store uh, the parameter instead uh, uh, to change something uh, regarding the types, I just have to change in the type trait and automatically all of the various uh, classes that I've developed will use the new type, automatically. This is the advantage of trait, okay? But uh, here, just to, to, to show you an example of a static assert and an example of type traits is same. In fact, since I'm using CPP uh, num solver, CPP num solvers use Eigen. So in fact, I cannot uh, really use Armadillo. So, or, or any other library I, I, I would like. So what, I, what I'm checking here is get correct trait, the one that I should use is linear algebra, linear algebra is the namespace where everything is, regression traits, linear algebra Eigen, because I need to use Eigen. And here I'm just checking that the trait that I inherit from the cost function is indeed the correct trait. If it is not the correct trait, I print at compile time, so this will be a compile error, a, a message, the cost function for CPP solver must be an Eigen library. So if by mistake, if I had implemented also Armadillo, and by mistake I tried to use this with Armadillo, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I cannot, because CPP Solver use Eigen. Likely CPP Numerical Solver use the same type for the argument as the cost function, so it was uh, rather simple. Parameters is, it, is, uh, is the same. Uh, well, here I'm using correct trait. I could have used trait because at this point they are the same. Vector, he uses uh, the Eigen vector, so my vector is fine because uh, uh, in my trait vector is an Eigen vector. So this was uh, a piece of cake. And now the, the, um, Now the the the, con, the constructor. That has to take the vector and the cost function. 
okay? So the cost function and the vector. And uh, in fact, uh, uh, so I need, this is a proxy. So I need to give to the proxy. Uh, it, it hasn't got any, any default constructor because uh, when uh, I have to have my cost function, I have to have the vector of data x and y, and then I call these uh, um, uh, the, the constructor. Personally, I don't remember why I made it a template constructor, since a vector is, uh, is that one. You can take out this template class vector if you want. It's, uh, it's irrelevant. Um, the cost function and the vector are stored as a reference. So I don't make copies. This is a proxy, okay? Are ex these are external objects and the proxy just refers to them through a reference. I've used a reference because it's nice. Huh? What is very important is that I must have these two methods that must be called value, take the vector of parameter and return the value of the cost function for the given data. You see the data is now stored here. Hmm? And I must have a function called gradient that computes the derivative. So these are indeed uh, the two functions that, uh, that uh, um, interface uh, with, C++, uh, with CPP num solvers because uh, CPP num solvers wants uh, the, the cost function as a class with a member called value that takes the parameter and a method called gradient that takes the parameter and uh, returns the gradient uh, in a vector. This is where the gradients are returned. These will override, you see the override, the analogous function in the CPP base in this, in this class, in fact, in the CPP to lib problem class. This is, very, this is very useful to use override because if by mistake I made some, some error here, since I, I declare that this has to override a method of the base class, I will get a syntax error. So I'm sure that, uh, that uh, now I'm calling uh, this function and the arguments correctly because uh, I'm not getting a, co a compile error. This for the gradient, and you see I'm just implementing it in terms of my cost function. So m cost eval was my method to compute the value. Instead, uh, and I had to pass the, the data, while instead, uh, this uh, is uh, the method, the equivalent method for CPP uh, numerical solver that needs only the parameters because the the, it requires a CPP numerical solver that the data is stored inside uh, the cost function class. There is also a nice feature. There is another method called callback that you can override. This method is uh, can uh, provide you with uh, some information, some extra information about the, the iteration. So you can understand if you are iterating uh, correct, if, uh, if the algorithm is converging, how fast is converging, what was the value of, of, the, of the cost function here at a certain iteration, and things like that. Uh, if you do not define it, it's not an error. Callback uh, will do nothing. But if you override it, you have a disposal, a set of things, state, uh, grad, x norm, uh, and uh, you, uh, you have to pass a vector x that is the current value of, uh, of um, uh, in fact, of y. Uh, of, of, of the solution, sorry, uh, is the current, current value of the parameters. Uh, and uh, uh, so here you have, uh, 
just uh, setting the precision just to have a, a nice printing. Uh, so I will, I will have uh, the value of the gradient, uh, the grad norm. Uh, I will have uh, the norm of, of, the, uh, of the solution, the value of the cost function, and so on. Uh, this uh, state uh, is, of course, uh, a variable defined in uh, CPP2Lib problem that I can use to extract information about the state of the iteration. So now I have everything. I have everything. And let's see if it works, okay? Now let's look at the main. Okay, so I'm including what is uh, necessary, MSC cost function, polynomial regression evaluator, regression solver. Uh, I, have, um, I have set uh, a C preprocessor macro because uh, maybe I don't have a CPP solver installed. Uh, so if I compile with minus D no CPP solver, all the part with the CPP solver will not be active. Then uh, using namespace linear algebra, because that is the namespace where everything is uh, and I don't want uh, to waste time, even if I'm still using linear algebra here, it was not necessary. Um, I'm using linear algebra Eigen, so linear algebra to use uh, is linear algebra Eigen, is the only one that at the moment uh, is uh, implemented, uh, so there is no much choice. Uh, I'm using a polynomial of degree 5, so n is equal 5. I create a monomial basis function with that library to use, that is just the, the Higgin. Model basis n, this is a constructor that tells the dimension of the basis, so n is, an, is, a, is in fact the degree of polynomial. Huh? So uh, I, will leave, I will have a six, um, six um, uh, monomials, eh? because I have also the constant monomial, of course. Then uh, uh, what is normally called the, the shift, no? the, the, the one that gives the shift. Um, then I have as a model, I take a polynomial regression evaluator that takes uh, as a basis function, the polynomial monomial basis function library to use, this, these ones. Eh? Um, this is just a type def, uh, not to have to write every time all this stuff. Uh, so my model is model and takes uh, the model basis, which is an object of the right type because this corresponds to this. Okay? Then I have my model. Then, okay, using vector again is a vector. You see, again, I use the trace to get the right type for the vector. Uh, I, di I dimension the vector with six values. This is for the training, and then for testing, I just have a two, uh, but I could have made more. To train the day, to create the training data, I do something stupid because what I do, I just uh, create a polynomial of uh, uh, degree. Uh, Two, so is a is a um, parabola to which I add some noise. Noise normally distributed, so the, I am really in a, in a, in a situation where using uh, mean square error is correct because this uh, is a distribution that does not depend on x uh, mean zero because it's an error, so it's just that. Uh, and uh, variance, uh, uh, I don't remember if this is the variance of the standard deviation, but I think it's the variance one to the minus two. So I will, uh, this, uh, the x is the value that I get uh, from, uh, uh, it's just one, two, three, four, five, I mean, uh, and uh, this is just uh, the square plus uh, the error. So. You can change it if you want. Then uh, I need a solver. And I'm using, first I'm using MSE, the one that uses uh, uh, QR. They use uh, QR factorization. 
I pass the model, and then I call solve. The method solve of a, a linear of a, any solver. I remember the solver must have a, a method solve that takes uh, the two uh, the data train x train y. It does everything. So eventually, I can just print the parameter that I have computed. So you see, I just have to call solve with the train set. Now, uh, I want to uh, to uh, compute the training and ge the generalization error. So what I do, I uh, okay. I I need to have now directly the cost function, the the, um, the MSC cost function, because uh, it was uh, um, not um, uh, it was not created as a cost function because I was using directly the QR factorization. So to use the QR factorization, I don't need to construct the cost function. Now I construct the cost function. I call it J. I have to pass the model. And I compute the training. To compute the training, I just uh, evaluate the value of the cost function on the training set for the found value of the parameter. So this is the training error. I know how my training of the uh, of the um, uh, of the regression model uh, is good. Okay, if I'm doing uh, if this error is uh, too big, uh, I'm doing uh, underfitting. I need to increase the capacity of the model, and then I do generalization error. To do generalization error. I just uh, uh, create, uh, just, uh, uh, I just uh, use uh, as a test uh, uh, two values, uh, 4.5 and 8 for x, but I can make more. Huh? These are, are eigen uh, vectors, so I can use uh, the streaming operator to fill them. So 4.58, and this is 4.5 times 4.5, so the square, plus the, the error, plus the uh, the normal distributed error, square plus the normal distributed error. I can have more if I want. And then I evaluate the cost function for those two points. Or just two points. Uh, there should be more. Eh? Uh, but uh, I didn't uh, want to waste time, so I just put two points. But uh, you can generate how, how many as you want and uh, try to find the generalization error. In fact, to really find the generalization error, now I, I discover that uh, I should divide by two rigorously, because when I'm computing J, uh, I'm not dividing by the number of samples or things, it is irrelevant. Huh? But anyway, that is a detail. Then a value of some test point just to have some, some numbers uh, out. The interesting part is now CP, CPP solver. I'm using problem equal cost function CPP solver MSE cost function model. So I'm passing my cost function that takes the model to the proxy. And uh, so this is just the type. Problem is F, remember that I have to pass, is compulsory, I don't have a default constructor. I have to pass the cost function that is called J and I have to pass the training set. And now I can choose the solver. I can choose different solver, gradient descent solver, BFGS solver. There are many solvers in CCPT to live. To live. Here is the BFGS. It's a quasi-Newton method, so it's quite efficient. I have to pass the problem. So that's the only thing I have to do. BFGS solver, problem solver. And uh, I need to get to have a, a, an initial guess. I think that if you don't indicate it, it will be zero. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's an iterative method, so you have to give an initial guess. And then you do solver minimize the problem F. 
starting from the initial guess. And then we have the result from optimization, uh, generalization error at value of the test point. Does it work? Of course it works. Otherwise, I will not be here. Uh, it's already compiled, so don't waste time to recompile it. You just have to type make. Huh? Main. So, I've compiled with the debugger because I wanted uh, to see also the, the you know, the, that callback. Eh? I wanted to see how the minimization was behaving. And indeed, the minimization was doing very nicely. Now, let's look at the parameter found from the QR factorization. My uh, model, uh, I had a quadratic, okay? My function was a quadratic plus some error. So I, I expect uh, to have uh, uh, the third uh, parameter that is the coefficient uh, for the cubic term. This is the coefficient for the constant, linear, cubic, etc., etc. I was, uh, I'm expecting uh, um, it to be uh, near one, and indeed it is near one, and the other to be small. So it's not so bad. The training error is very small, so it means uh, that uh, uh, it is not so. It is not so bad. The generalization error is, however, a bit too high. Probably I'm doing here a bit of overfitting. I'm using a model a bit too rich. Um, it's just a parabola, and I'm using a polynomial order 5. Uh, maybe I have some spurious oscillation. So this is a typical case of overfitting. The generalization error is a bit too, is a bit too high. Um, the values at the text point, well, this is not just two values, just to have some, some numbers. Uh, here is how the uh, gradient method works. Uh, sorry, BFGS, it was not the gradient, the BFGS. You see that uh, the gradient, the, mo the norm of the gradient drops very rapidly. In just seven iterations, my cost function is really zero up to four digits. The parameters are indeed slightly different. I didn't expect that, but, uh, uh, well, just in the last digit, eh? so are more or less the same. So I'm getting the same value of the parameter, but in fact, the BFGS is working better. QR, um, well, uh, I, can, I can explain you why. Unfortunately, I'm using the monomial basis function that is not uh, the most stable. Uh, so the, probably the matrix uh, on which I'm computing QR is not well conditioned and QR is accumulating some approximation, some Randolph error, uh, because you see, training error is now zero. I'm passing exactly through the point, something that I would expect since uh, it should be, uh, I don't have enough points to do a good training and, and the function is really passing through the point. The generalization error is by far too high at this point. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope you can uh, want to play with it. You can take uh, the code, you can modify, you can correct it. If you find bugs, uh, please write, uh, because I've really programmed it in, uh, in two days work uh, uh, without really making extensive, extensive checks. Thank you if you have uh, uh, listened uh, up to now.